Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. In this video, we're going to be building the PC6 from K9JEB.com. Let's get to it right after this. The PC6 has one power pole inlet and six power pole outlets, as well as a USB outlet and a 30 amp fuse. This one also comes with a meter. K9JEB.com has several different power pole distribution blocks that you can build. Okay, some of the tools you're gonna need for this are gonna be a multimeter to make sure that everything's hooked up properly, crimpers for the power poles, small flat tip screwdriver, small Phillips screwdriver. If you feel like it, you can get a power pole removal tool, some snips and small needle nose pliers. And for insulation, if you want, you can use some electrical tape. You're also gonna need a soldering iron. And to make life just a little easier, you're either going to need a set of helping hands or a board holder or board vise. Okay, the parts list, you get the main case, the board, which is a PC6. You get seven of the power pole connector shells, enough connectors for them to put the cable in. You get an LED readout, the parts for the fuse, a USB connector, and you get two of the capacitor or yeah capacitors, one smaller capacitor, LED, 10K resistor. And one of the first things we're going to do is prepare the Anderson power poles, and it says to cut 14 pieces between 5 8 to 3 quarter inches, or 16 to 19 millimeters. Um, as you can see, I'm going to be cutting them into. 18 millimeter pieces. And what I've done is I've made a little piece of tape that's 18 millimeters wide. I think that'll speed up the process. Well, we'll never see that one again. Okay, now we're going to crimp the connectors onto the wire. Just for some extra security, now we're going to solder in the connectors to the, the wire. Mind you, I suck at soldering. Okay, when you're going to put these shells together, putting the connectors inside, hopefully it focuses. On the top here, you can see there's a little A. Make sure it's right side up and that the red is on the right. You may need something to help uh, push these down. Okay, the first components we're going to solder on here are going to be the fuse holders. Got two of them. And hopefully you can see this. They've got a skinny side here and a thicker side. So the skinnier portion is going to go into these holes and the thicker one into these holes. I'm going to try and do a little tacking here. Okay, see if we can't flip that over and they'll hold. And yeah, we can solder them a little better from this side. Okay, next we're going to be putting in these two capacitors. One will go at the end and one goes more at the center. Now they do mount from the bottom side, but they will have enough slack to fold over so that they'll fit in the case. 
Put the first one in here by the fuse holders. And you can spread out the legs a little so that it'll hold it in place. And then the second one goes up here by where it says UC2. And again, pull out the legs a little so it'll hold it in place. All right, and then you clip these legs off, but you need to make sure that you hold on to them because they're gonna come in to play when we put in the USB pad. Okay, not sure how well you can see this. Be putting in R1, which is a 10K resistor. Got it down. Separate the legs so it'll hold it in place. Gotta be careful not to fill in these other two holes over here, as those are for the LED, if I remember correctly. And we now we're gonna solder in the LED, and the longer leg is the positive side. Okay, now it's time to start uh, soldering in the power pole connectors. Okay, next we're gonna put in this capacitor into C3, which is right here. And if you'll notice, I've already taken off the three rows of the power pole connectors for putting it on the USB port. Okay, now for the USB module. Now, per the directions, it talks about trying to trim these six points down as much as possible. Now, Dan, KD2FMW, he has a, a video on building the same thing, and he talks about putting electrical tape across here to prevent shorts, which is a great idea. And if you haven't checked out his channel, I highly recommend doing it and subscribing. Okay, you got those down a little. Now we'll throw a little electrical tape on there. And there we go. And now you're gonna need two of the legs that you saved from your cutoffs. Okay, we've got the two legs we cut off earlier going through the USB module. Tack those on real quick. Okay, now let's mount this to the board. I'm not sure if you can see these, but there's a little hole here and here where these legs go in. And per the directions, you wanna keep about one millimeter in between the board and the USB module, somewhere around there. Okay, the leads we're gonna solder, one's right here and one's on the other side. Trying to apply some pressure to hold this board up, to hold it in place. 
Again, trying to keep about a one millimeter gap in between the USB module and the main board. Nope. Okay, let's put the power pull covers back on. Now let's get the uh, fuse in there and check it out, make sure everything's working properly. Alrighty, and we've got the meter hooked up. Positive goes over here by J2, and negative straight down from it. Now we'll stick this in the little case, screw it in there, and test it out. So far we have everything lining up good. Okay, let's try screwing the meter first. And do not over tighten these or you will break something. Okay, I'm gonna use this BioNO 6 amp hour and we're gonna see if this works. And there we go. And there we go, it's working. Okay, it works. You can see the little lightning bolt in the battery there. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, check out one of these other videos. And thanks again for watching.